I'm Red Fox, and welcome to the series where I do challenge runs of games with rules based on challenging game modes of other games. In this video, I'm going to be speedrunning Skyrim's main questline, Glitchless, on Legendary difficulty, but I'll be playing under the rules of Dead Space's pure survival mode and classic mode, which means I can't loot anything from any enemies unless it's a quest-related item or a mod item, and I can only use items from previous games, namely Morrowind and Oblivion. According to Speedrunner.com, the current world record for a glitchless run through the main quest on Legendary difficulty is 1 hour and 17 minutes. And in this video, I'll be beating that record. Jumping over from our MGSV Grey Fox run to this one... Hey, you! Finally awake. For Helgen, I created the Nereverine and I chose the Shadow Birth Sign, which gives me an invisibility power that'll be useless for most of the run. The Warrior class, since it has the best mix of attributes and major skills for surviving on Legendary difficulty and using all of my equipment from Oblivion and Morrowind. Set the difficulty to Legendary and use spells to get through the intro dungeon since I don't have access to any equipment from the previous games. I went to the Riverwood Trader and got Nerevar Rising, a spell that heals me for 10,000 hit points and starts playing Morrowind's Nerevar Rising song. This is an absolutely invaluable piece of my kit moving forward, but we still need weapons and armor. To start collecting gear, I need to head to Whiterun, but I can't do it alone and unarmed, so I grab an ally from the Interesting NPCs mod from the Sleeping Giant Inn, Huromir, a young man who's too clumsy to hold down a steady job. Like in previous games, nobody is essential in this run, so I could very well lose him in battle, but if he can get me to Whiterun, that's all I need. I roll right past these wolves and walk right into the city, getting exactly where I need to be, the Drunken Huntsman. Now, in this bar, I found several different sets of Morrowind-inspired armor and weapons, and I gave myself a cheap carry weight ring so that I could carry all of it, and I gave some armor to Huromir, and I stuffed all of my stolen equipment into a storage container so that the guards could arrest me for taking all of it, but couldn't take back my stolen goods. With my new equipment on hand, I could start the main quest by speaking to Jarl Balgriff about the dragon. I head to Bleak Falls Barrow with Huromir and my Astoranem the Legacy, a fancy weapon from a mod pack I added, and I use it to fight a couple of bandits. I fight the bandit group in front of the dungeon, but oh shit, I just murdered Huromir, so I reload my last save and kill all the bandits again. After leveling up and getting one of those Morrowind reflection messages, I cleared out the rest of the dungeon and Huromir and I took on the Draugr boss fight. I don't want to fight him head on because normal Draugr kill me in like two hits, so I use a scroll of mass paralysis and try to shred him to pieces before he can get back up and tear me apart with his bare hands. He gets back up before I can finish him off, but he attacks Huromir while I attack from behind, which is pretty much the same strategy I use on every enemy in this run. Ah oh, fuck, I grabbed the Dragonstone, but that's okay because it's a quest item just like the Golden Claw before it, and I even get the Helm of Tohan as a reward that I'll use later. If it's something I need to progress, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. Coming out of Bleak Falls, I see Little Vivek, a new village tied to a quest called Moon and Star that I started earlier, so I swap my weapon to the Aurora Blade and swap my armor from the Azura's Hands armor into Azurian armor to show off all my cool gear and the Azurian shield since the Aurora Blade is one-handed, and I head to the village. I'm trying to find and kill some criminal for House Halalu, but after I get a lead, the village and I get killed by a pack of drows that can one or two shot me. I reload and get the information again and try to fight the Dro again, but I just can't beat them. Instead, I fast traveled away and did a delivery quest for one of the villagers, and then tried to fast travel back and kill the Dro's before they attacked the villagers. Eventually, I tried to give up and even leveled up and got another reflection in the process, but when the Dro's attacked the village again, I realized that this wasn't a problem I could ignore. I'd die once trying to fight one of these things, and oh look, we lost a villager. But after using Huromir as bait, I kill one, another one attacks, and we kill that son of a bitch too. I summon my ancestral ghost, a racial power I have for being a dark elf, and together with him and Huromir, we kill a third one. Now it's just down to one other and the Broodmother, and with the power of my fireball shooting staff, the Dreadfire, while Huromir unfortunately gets caught in the blast and killed, I'm able to whittle them down to just me and the Broodmother. Way to go, I defeated the Broodmother with the help of some random dro hunter right next to the Neston village that was content to just sit back and watch the village get wiped out, and, to mourn Huromir's recent passing, I went back to Riverwood to recruit Gore to replace him. 
You're a who? The Little Vivek village leader sends me on a quest to take out some nearby bandits in exchange for information on a stranger who matched the description of the person I was looking for and who recently passed through the village. But it seems the stranger took out all the bandits already, so I take the bandit leader's helmet as proof and the village leader, Balron, tells me that the guy I'm looking for is in a nearby Dwemer ruin called Kagranar. I get to the ruin and get some cool stuff like a Heart of Kagranak and fucking useless replicas of Keening, Sunder, and Wraithguard. I solved these three puzzles by solving a riddle and putting something into a box, but I also just googled the answers because I've got a world record to beat, and I meet the stranger, the Nerevery, literally me. We team up and defeat this fake-ass Nemidium, and Ryan Gosling gives me Chrysomir as a reward, so I find and kill the low-tier god wannabe Halalu nerd that sent me to kill myself. After that, I return the Golden Claw to Lucan, and I give the Dragonstone to Farangar. Jarl Baller sends me to go fight the dragon at the Watchtower, and after I buy some new spells, change up my outfit, and equip my new Chrysomir, I take it on. I try to stealth at first using my Shadow Birth Sign power, but it totally doesn't work. Next, I charge in with the absolute beast that is Chrysomir, level up mid-battle, and finish off the winged beast with the last of Chrysomir's charge. Having completed that and having gotten Lydia as a second companion, you'd think that my next step would be High Hrothgar, and you'd be right, but before even making it to Iverstead, I had to spend about a half hour trying to defeat or even survive this horde of goblins. Eventually, I just settle for pacifying half of them with a scroll of harmony and then run away. I then spend ten minutes getting past this bear and other wildlife to make it to the boss fight of High Hrothgar, the Frost Troll. Normally, this fight isn't too bad for me, but let's see how it goes. Okay, so I try using a bunch of poisons and dual wielding, but my paralysis poison, my best chance to get in a ton of strikes quickly, wears off too fast for me to just snag that last little bit of health and win. I had to do this alone because Gore and Lydia had been consumed by the horde of goblins earlier. Luckily, I remember that I can summon my ancestral guardian and employ my usual tactic by using Grandpa as bait for the troll's aggro. After I get to High Hrothgar, I get the Moon and Star Ring from Morrowind, then the Greybeards teach me a bunch of shouts and then help me kill some random thugs that somehow made it up the 7,000 steps, even though that's spoken of as some kind of achievement here, and now the Greybeards send me to collect a legendary gift shop trinket. I get to Ustengrav, but there's a bunch of evil magic guys here, so I shed a little light on the situation and cut them down with my Copper Briar, or whatever this sword is called. There are more evil magic guys inside, so I try to sneak using my useless shadow power, but that doesn't work, and I'm immediately spotted. I kill them while they're fighting some random bandits there too, and use clairvoyance because my stupid ass can't remember where to go in a one-path room. Fighting the spiders by myself here is impossible, but I summon my trusty ancestral guardian, and that, in conjunction with leading the spiders onto the fire floor traps, allows me to burn them to a crisp from afar. Alright, we're here. And the horn's gone. Cool. Mission complete. Delphine reveals herself as the Horn Thief and Blade person, so we head out together to fight a dragon attack in Kinsgrove, and then the journey took an hour because of several encounters where I died a couple dozen times and what felt like hundreds of crashes. Alright, so I start attacking the dragon before he even makes it out of the ground, but just getting tagged with his ice breath takes me out. This time I do a better job of staying to his sides and tail, and fuck yeah, we take him out. Oh sure, now you believe that I'm the Dragonborn after watching me suck a dragon's soul out. I'm going back to the guys that give me a bunch of free shouts and stuff, fuck you. Things have been progressing a bit slower than I'd have liked at this point, but the Thalmor infiltration mission is really where the run starts coming into its own. Like, I practically blitzed through the rest of this run. Man, I'm so glad this mission only took an hour, because going through it alone was incredibly easy and didn't at all require the most specific and awkward strategy ever. Okay, now we know that Esbern's alive and he's living in the sewer, hiding from the Thalmor, who don't even know that he's alive, but whatever. We do Brynjolf's frame job and work our way through the Ratway to find Esbern. Okay, we gotta go, dude, I'm speedrunning. Oh cool, some maybe special armor that I'll never use because I don't know for sure if it's a mod item or not. Alright, here are the Thalmor that probably either followed me here or already knew Esbern was here and would have murdered his sewer rat ass if not for plot convenience. Alright, I brought your grandpa, let's get a move on here. Okay, we're going to Skyhaven Temple for Alduin's Wall, so I use the fast travel cart to get to Markarth, and I'm heading over to Karth's Spire past a dragon in a horde of Forsworn. Alright, Briarheart is dead, now we just need to make it to the temple. Alright, cut my life into pieces, grab the cool Akaviri Sunderblade here to match the Akaviri Warblades I got from Delphine earlier. Now these two weebs need to finish their spiel so I can move on. Alright, so I know we're on a timetable here, but hear me out. I feel like my equipment so far isn't Morrowindy enough, and I know a great Morrowind weapon I can grab real quick since we're making such good time. The Ice Blade. 
And it'll only take me completing most of the Dawn Guard quest, but it's okay, we got this! Getting up the mountain to enter the dungeon to save Serana is a tall glass of water that'll take way too long. So I spend the next four hours trying to get the Levitate spell from Morrowind, so that I could just fly up to the cave instead of climbing, which would take forever. Okay, so the place where you go to get the Levitate spell is bugged and causes me to crash. So I'm just gonna buy the spell from Tolfdeer at the College of Winterhold. A dragon encounter glitched the Gate Guard's dialogue and she won't let me in even though I passed the test. So while I would never glitch in a glitchless speedrun, I am going to use a cheat spell from a mod to just unlock the gate, a real time saver. By the way, cheating is integral for a successful world record speedrun. Well, he's not selling the spell. Maybe I've got to do a couple of quests for the College questline. So I ended up doing the entire questline and cheating to level up my alteration to 100 since he apparently only sells the spell to expert level alteration mages, but it didn't work. Okay, it looks like I'm gonna have to figure out how to get into the crash place since this is such an important time save. Well, I just cleared out Renvig's fast and it's not here. Okay, I googled it, and it was outside and away from the specific area that would crash my game the whole time. See, you guys were probably doubting me, but look at this! You know how much time that probably saved? Probably negative three hours, but it's still way more awesome than just climbing. Look, now I can just float over all the enemy- oh! Now that we've saved Serana and flown away from all the enemies here, we take her back home and reject Harkin's offer, completing our first step towards a quest completely unrelated to our speedrun for a sword that'll be a huge time saver. Okay, to help save some more time here, I'm gonna try to get something that I think will help the run. So I crash a couple dozen times here, but when I get it working and just run past everyone into Felglow Keep, the dungeon that holds my world record winning prize, I go ahead and use summons and magic to kill this clan fear who's really dumb and too big to get through the hallway but can one-shot me, these Daedroth who are a little bit taller, who are ballers and who have a girl who looks good and they call her, an evil wizard lady, another dumb clan fear severely brain damaged from the days of Morrowind and Oblivion, some vampires, more wizards, another clan fear and its friends since this is apparently a layer of Oblivion, two Daedroth titans while wearing a ring that made me invincible since there was less than 0% chance I could have ever beaten them and I've got a speedrun to win, a cornucopia of evil wizards practicing their magic and eating lunch, and more Daedroth and some undead after what seemed like hours. I just did that all with a piece of shit replica of Keening that only does 5 damage. Now I've got to fight through a ton more wizards, but I've got this incredibly powerful Daedroth summon that basically carried me through the rest of the game and saved me a ton of time on the speedrun, and I use them to clear out the last of the evil sorcerers and scamps and demons. Here we go, boss fight of the dungeon. The Caller, the most evil of the evil, and the most wizard of the wizards. I'm gonna just sick my Daedroth on her and pick at her as I can. At this point, I haven't completed the entire College of Winterhold questline, but I'm going to because I have to in order to start the Tools of Kagranak quest, which will get me a ton of great equipment that'll shave hours off my final time. I also need to help this guy and finish his quest to get the real Keening, and first I've got to get him a bunch of Dwemer Cogs. I just cheat myself some Dwemer Cogs since that's the fastest way to get that mission done, and now he wants me to go get a staff for him. It seems a bit out of the way for a main quest speedrun, but you've got to do what you've got to do when you're trying to get the world record. Okay, I'm literally just going to fly in because I've died a dozen times just trying to get to the dungeon at this point. Okay, you're welcome. Would be nice if you helped. See, look, I can literally just fly up to the end of the dungeon. Hours saved. I told you guys Levitate was worth it. Alright, Daedroth, you can take all the aggro there. Oh shit, he's got the staff! I'm just gonna send an army of Mythic Dawn people at him until he drops. Mission accomplished. Alright, staff traded for Warped Gem and Warped Gem delivered. Now I've just gotta finish the rest of the college questline to finish his quest. Come on, man, I don't have Sigic Magic to freeze the timer. Stop talking to me! Time to find the Augur of Dunlin, or whatever. Here I killed about a dozen Daedroth and found the Augur, which means now I've gotta to head to Muzulf and find out what the Synod Mages there know about the Staff of Magus. Ah, this shouldn't be too hard, it's just a bu- Oh, shit! Okay, had to call in backup. I sure I'm glad I have all these summons and these weapons and this armor. It sure is saving a lot of time. No, I don't have a problem. Okay, why isn't he doing anything? Maybe if I just give him a little tap. There we go, it actually worked! 
Now that I have the information from the Synod, I've got to go to the Labyrinth to get the staff itself. Okay, guess before I go get the staff, I've got to kill these things. I'm poisoning them, I'm fortifying my health and stamina, I'm sticking my Daedroth on them. So why is it so fucking hard to kill them? Oh great, a dragon has joined the fray. I'm trying to mix ranged magic with my sword, but I don't know how effective my magic is and they kill me way too fast when I get close. Okay, we're halfway there. Come on, just die, you shits! Yes, okay, done. All right, levitating to the labyrinth. Best time saver ever. Oh yeah, forgot about the undead dragon boss fight. Good luck, Gore and Daedroth. Okay, they're distracting the ads, and yes, I got them! Ah yes, a swarm of Daedroth. This place has been nothing if not predictable. At this point, the rest of the dungeon is completely covered in Daedroth Titans, high-level Draugr, and normal Daedroth, all of which can completely destroy me since the dungeon constantly drains my magic, stopping me from summoning my Daedroth, so from here I have to methodically and systematically move through the dun- FUCK THIS! I'M JUST BECOMING ETHEREAL AND RUNNING THROUGH! YEAH, FUCK YOU GUYS! BECOME ETHEREAL AGAIN! OH FUCK! CLOSE THE GATE! Alright, kill this fucker. Okay, Daedroth, take care of the area boss and I'll take out the ads. I'm coming to help! Oh, another area boss? Meet my Daedroth. Oh shit, guy in a chair. Rule number one of ancient dungeons, never fuck with the guy who's been sitting in a chair for like a hundred years waiting for somebody to get this far. Okay, we got him. Marking about the halfway point of the run, we free the dragon priest and kill him to get the Staff of Magnus. One Thalmor nerd down, one to go. We're about to finish the college quest line so that we can do another quest that's gonna get us some stuff that's gonna save a lot of time. First I kill this dragon, then I no-clip through this barrier because everyone's bugged out and I need to speed up this speed run, and then after about a half hour of an incredibly buggy and difficult battle, I defeat Encano and complete a quest line that has nothing to do with what we're speedrunning. Okay, now that I've got that out of the way, Let's talk with that dude and finish his quest to start the quest to get the stuff that's gonna win us the world record. Okay, he just wants me to go around and heat up his soul gem. Done. Done. Okay, that's it. Back to the guy. Alright, now we're gonna wait a week and that should start the last part of his quest. Okay, he wants us to go retrieve Keening from some bandit that stole it. This is it. With the end in sight, I slaughter all the bandits and got Keening back to Arniel. Oh, he's gone. Sick, I have the real Keening now. Oh, okay. The courier's not showing up. Oh, okay, I guess we're killing a dragon now. Damn, these Sothasil daggers are insanely good. Alright, I guess while we wait for Tools of Kagranak to begin, we can keep working on the speedrun. Unfortunately, the quest bugged out, and none of the fixes worked for me, so this whole quest line was a massive time loss. Alright, I think I should start grabbing some of the special weapons I've added from Morrowind and Oblivion to help save time while we wait for Tools of Kagranak. First on the list is the Bell Hammer of the Sixth House from Morrowind. Sorry, banditos, you've gotta die so I can learn where to get this hammer. Alright, it should be somewhere in here. Alright, got it, on to the next. Next, I was off to Windhelm to grab some letters leading me to the location of the Helm of Oren Bearclaw, a special artifact from Morrowind. Okay, so the helmet is somewhere around here. Oh, okay, we've just gotta take on an entire horde of Draugr and a dragon. No biggie. This helmet is better than the Helm of Tohan that I've got right now and has better enchantments. So this is definitely going to help me save a fairly exorbitant amount of time. Okay, I think it's up here somewhere. Oh shit, it is! Okay, next one off the list, onwards and upwards. I guess I can do some more Dawnguard quests for the Ice Blade. I've got to at least get to the Ariel Shrine in the Inner Sanctum before I can get it. After killing a group of vampires that had made it into Fort Dawnguard, Ezron sends me to recruit his old partners, which I get done in mere moments. I think I'm going to take a break from Dawnguard quests again, but, like, forever. Now thinking about it, I just don't know if doing this whole questline for a sword is going to save that much time. I think instead, I'm going to go grab the Septimus Sigma outpost for later and get the Mace of Avril Lavigne Stonesinger, two birds with one stone. After that, I headed to Solstheim to pick up some equipment from Blood Moon that got carried over through some mods I downloaded. Alright, we're at Ravenrock and our first stop is just due east. Time to levitate. Whoa, a Silt Strider, that's fucking sick! It took a little longer than expected to get here, but just think of all the time we saved with Levitate. After arriving at Bujold's Retreat, I got my first special Blood Moon Ring to replace the largely useless up to this point Moon and Star Ring, the A-Slip Ring. 
which granted me a ton of buffs and allowed me to summon a spectral version of the Lord Acelip Draugr from Blood Moon. Okay, under the jail, I should be able to get the Ancestral Ring. Cold Cinder Cave, that's where it is. Got it, alright, what's next? Ah! Cliff Racers! Okay, I think next I'm going for the Bad Hammer, but that's back in Solitude. Ah shit, I guess I have to do the Sheograth quest to get it. Okay, that didn't take long, maybe we can recover the time lost by using the Bad Hammer. Maybe I should have tried no-clipping through for a big time save. With the Bad Hammer in hand, my vast arsenal of rare and powerful artifacts from Morrowind and Oblivion was growing ever larger, and each was gonna save me enough time to make up for any time lost getting them. Quick, back to Solstheim for the Blue Dev Ring. It's just here somewhere, so I can just grab it and quickly move on to the Bonefighter Bow. Okay, got it. Now we gotta get to the Damp Hall Mines. I got the bow pretty early on, but had to clear the dungeon because it got caved in. Okay, we've got a lot of powerful armors, rings, and weapons, as well as some great spells. Let's get back to the main quest. What, you want me to walk up to the Throat of the World? What if I just... levitated up there instead? Hours saved. Awesome stuff. Now I've gotta get an Elder Scroll to learn Dragon Rend to beat Alduin. Good thing I can just fast travel to Sigma and start the quest. Massive time save, guys. Alright, huge time save here. I'm gonna open this elevator to the start of Blackreach by cheating. The first of many victims to my Ancestral Ghost missile launch pad. Getting through Blackreach was as difficult as ever and mostly consisted of me running past everything while ethereal, but I had to stop and fight this Dwarven Colossus since the hammer you get for beating it, if used properly, could save an immense amount of time. I can't really get close because the thing has like a 60 foot aura of fire that melts me if I get close, but my ancestral missile launcher here has the drive and the power. Okay, he's weak enough. If I just run in and finish him off, I'll save so much time. Yes! Got the hammer. Got the Elder Scroll. Let's go get Dragon Rend. The cutscene glitched out and lost me a precious few 10 minutes, but if we just destroy Alduin with our busted artifacts, we can still make it. Okay, let's see if I can Dragon Rend and then we'll take him out as a werewolf. The Blue Dev Ring gives me beast form and werewolves do good damage. Oh shit, I can't Dragon Rend. New plan. Use the classic strategy of attacking while Gore and Ancestral Guardian attack and take aggro. Gotta get rid of the meteors, they can kill me even without Alduin attacking. The full Dragon Rend takes too long to recharge, but the one word shout can Dragon Rend stun lock him. We've made some pretty substantial progress, let's drop a save. Ah, so close! Damn it, it just doesn't let me shout sometimes! Okay, let's try to finish him off with dual wield. With some trial and error and a lot of saving and reloading, I finally felled the magnificent beast, but he did something I never expected. He ran away to a place I couldn't get to. Alright, Alduin's down, but I really need to prep for the final battle after seeing how that fight went. What I could really use is armor better than a fake wraith guard that only gives five armor so that I don't have to keep healing. There should be some really good gauntlets here. Oh shit, bandits! Hey, special new Drez Slave Master outfit. It's worse than what I have, but it's new. Okay, got the light and heavy gauntlets of the Horny Fist, both of which give serious buffs and fortify unarmed by 100, which will actually unironically save a lot of time since my punches will be doing a shit ton of damage. I tried to grab a couple more artifacts before the final encounter like the Ring of Vampire Kiss, the Hammer Veloth's Judgment, the Bipolar Blade and a bunch of artifacts from prior games, and a group of legendary rings from prior games, but I'm really only able to get my hands on the hammer, the sword, and the artifacts since the Vampire Kiss ring boss never spawned for me, and I decided that the quest for the other rings would eat up too much time and might cost me an already close race. Oh, this lady's a friendly talking wisp mother. Thought she was bugged and didn't want to unbug her and aggro her. Alright, she's not giving me the laid to rest quest that I need to get the ring I'm after, but I'll try to clear the dungeon it's in to see if I can get it anyway. Damn it, after one of the more difficult dungeons of the run, the ring isn't even here! I, I think we wasted too much time here. Okay, Crag Swallow. Apparently this is where I start the Caves of Morrowind, the last quest I'm willing to try. Most of the quests have been bugs so far, probably conflicting with other mods just because of the sheer amount of mods I have downloaded and the Oblivion UI I have stopping me from editing my load order. So this is the final mod quest I'll attempt. I wanted to spend all my excess time on a fun new mod quest as not to beat the world record in a fast enough time that would make it impossible to overcome, but I guess that's y'all's problem now. Yeah, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Guess it's time to finish the run since I'm starting to cut it close. After the boring peace council negotiations where I just blatantly favor the Empire, I use the Ring of Khajiit and summon Odaving, but use the power of the ring to turn invisible and let my allies battle him instead. Alright, I'm here. In Skaldafen. Alone. This is it. This is how I get to Sovngarde. I just keep using the Ring of Khajiit's invisibility spell in my finally useful shadow power. 
Okay, I'm gonna have to take him out to get the claw to open that door. I can get him with my Daedroth. Yes, okay, got him, let's go! I blitz past the Dragon Priest into Sovngarde, defeat Soon, and meet up with the heroes that defeated Alduin the first time for one final battle. Okay, here's the plan. I'm gonna use the same tactic as I did in the first fight, use the heroes and my summons to distract Alduin while I spam one word Dragon Rend and Clear Skies. I'm starting to doubt whether getting all those weapons was that much of a time save since I haven't used any of them, but have faith! We are at the precipice of victory, we are about to claim the world title, we are here! Using one of my awesome weapons and with some epic armor, the Helm of Orin Bearclaw, the Gauntlets of Horny Fist, I think, and the best spells I've got, I fight Alduin for about 15 minutes and finally slay the monster. Come on, we're so close! Yes! Let's fucking go! We did it! Fuck yeah! Take that, you big scaly bitch! Hail the Dragonborn! Hail Red Fox, the new world record holder of the fastest completion of the main quest glitchless on Legendary. Thanks for the assistance, guys. I'll see you guys around. <laughs> well, that's my speedrun of Skyrim's main quest. I cheated through half of it and still missed the world record by about 30 hours. That was fucking easy. I wonder if I should submit this to speedrun.com now, or if that'll spoil the run for anyone who sees my world record. They laughed when I spent like 25 hours getting items I didn't need and would never use, but look at me now! They don't have a world record, they're just jealous. I levitate on these bitches.